Hey boys and girls from across the world, welcome. Welcome to the channel. My name is T -T Turger, and I'm here to let you know that today we have the EDH and we have the gameplay for you today. What am I doing right now? Am I breaking that? Don't worry about it. I'm, I just really wanted to cook. I, one of my favorite gags is just doing cooking stuff on a not cooking channel. I don't know why I find it funny. I don't find eggs funny though. For today's EDH slash Commander gameplay video, you're gonna see some familiar faces. One of them being, you know, the vampires, and another one being, you know, the Yuriko, and you know, sometimes, you know, you, you just you really need to, to chew that lane, you know? Get, get all chewy. But also we have a new face, his name, Gisa Gerald, and not, not a lot happens to Gisa and Gerald because someone commits a crime. That person was Guy Scott. He committed a crime this video. And now he has to pay for his sins. So uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cook my eggs. And at the end of the cooking of eggs, uh, you'll have finished watching the video. And then we, yeah, you, hey man. Welcome to today's EDH slash Commander gameplay video. As always, if you like this show or any of our other shows on YouTube, liking, sharing, and subscribing helps us out immensely. If you like our content and don't mind that extra mile, you can always support us over on Patreon, over at patreon.com backslash MTG the stack. Like a dog named Merle. Why do you think the dog's name is Merle? I don't know. Adrian, how many times have I taken this? Dude, I've been trying to figure out why you're doing this, other than there's a patron named that, but like this is like the fifth time. At this point, I feel like I should not give you permission to use anything you just recorded with your f stupid fucking iPhone. What? <laughs> Comment down below any of your thoughts and feelings, and we hope you enjoy the show. All right, for open hands, we have Aiden rocking Jusa and Garolf. His open hand includes a Swamp, Swamp, Command Tower, Temple of Deceit, Traumatize, Zombie Master, and a Demonic Tutor. After that, Guy's rocking his two-lane deck, and his opening hand includes a Forest, Island, Soul Ring, Nature's Claim, Oakham Adversary, a Brazen Borrower, and an Avon Mind Sensor. Then, Calvin's playing Edgar Markov again, and he kept a six-card hand, including a Plains, Swamp, Black Cleave Cliffs, Urborg Tomb of Yogba, Path to Exile, and a Vanquisher's Banner, shipping a Mana Confluence to the bottom. And then finally, Adrian's rocking Yuriko the Tiger's Shadow. His opening hand includes a Misty Rainforest, Island, Island, Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth, Tetsuko Umazawa Fugitive, Silent Blade Oni, and a Dig Through Time. You drew that one, I thought. Yeah, it was about top deck. Aiden won the die roll, so he'll open the game with a Temple of Deceit, scrying one to the top of his library, and then passing the turn. And then Guy's gonna draw for turn and drop a Forest, tapping it to cast Soul Ring before passing the turn. Calvin will drop a basic planes, passing the turn, and then Adrian will drop a misty rainforest, then cast Ornithopter, ending his turn. Round two, Aiden's gonna untap, draw, drop a command tower, then pass the turn. Then Guy's gonna untap, draw, drop an island, then he'll cast an Oakham adversary before passing the turn. Calvin will draw, drop a black cleave cliffs, then tap out to cast an impact tremors before passing the turn. Adrian will crack his Misty Rainforest on end step, searching his library for a Sunken Hollow, and then he'll untap, draw, drop an island, then attack Guy with his Ornithopter. Guy will declare no blocks, so Adrian will activate Yuriko's ability, putting her into the red zone and dealing one damage to Guy. Yuriko will trigger, revealing Agadim's Awakening off the top of his library, which he'll add to his hand, and then Adrian will end his turn by casting Ornithopter. Aiden will untap, draw, drop a swamp, and then he'll cast a Fruxian Arena before passing the turn. Guy will untap, draw, then he'll attack with the Okam Adversary, throwing it at Calvin, dealing some damage to him. Okam Adversary will trigger, Guy will draw a card, and then he's going to cast an Arbor Elf as well as a Phantasmal Image, copying the Okam Adversary. Guy will then pass the turn. Calvin's going to untap, draw, drop a swamp, and then pass the turn. Adrian's gonna untap, draw, drop an Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth, and then he'll throw his creatures at Aiden. No effects will happen, so the Eureka will connect, dealing one damage and triggering her, revealing a Baleful Strix off the top of Adrian's library. 
He'll then move to his second main phase and cast the Baleful Strix, drawing a card, and then he'll move to his end step, where he has to discard for turn, throwing another traitor to his graveyard. This will end Adrian's turn. Round 4, Aiden will untap, draw, cast a Zombie Master, then he'll drop a Demir Aqueduct, returning one of his lands to his hand, passing the turn. Guy's gonna untap, draw, then move into combat, throwing both of his Okane adversaries at Aiden. No blocks are declared, so the adversaries will connect, drawing Guy two cards. Guy's gonna move to his second main phase, he's gonna drop a forest, then he's gonna cast a Ristic Study before casting a Bloom Tender, ending his turn. Calvin will draw for turn, he'll drop a Graven Cairns, and then he'll drop a Chrome Mox, exiling a path to exile underneath it. He'll then tap out in order to cast a Vanquisher's Banner, ending his turn. Adrian's gonna untap, draw, drop an island, then he's gonna fold completely onto Guy, attacking of all his creatures. No effects or blocks are declared, so Adrian will Ninjutsu in his Miss Syndicate Naga, returning his Ornithopter to his hand. And then, after no further effects are declared, Adrian will try and cast Trickery Charm, targeting his Baleful Tricks to turn his creature type into a ninja. In response to that, Guy is going to cast Nature's Claim, targeting the Baleful Strix. This spell resolves, destroying the Baleful Strix and gaining Adrian for life, and then will move to the rest of combat. Adrian's creatures will connect, triggering both the Mist Syndicate Naga and the Yuriko. This will create a token copy of Mist Syndicate Naga, as well as reveal two cards off the top of Adrian's library, the first one being a Familiar's Ruse, and the second one being a Treasure Cruise. Adrian will then move to his second main phase and cast Ornithopter, opting not to pay for the Rissic Study Tax. He'll then pass the turn. Opening round 5, Aiden will untap, but before he draws anything, he's going to cast a Mystical Tutor, searching his library for a copy of Damnation and putting it on top of his library. He'll then draw his two cards, one off the arena, then he'll drop a Swamp and then move into combat, attacking Calvin with his Zombie Master. Then on his second main phase, he's going to cast that Damnation, opting not to pay for the Ristic Study. The Damnation resolves and everybody's board is reset. Aiden will then pass the turn. Guy's going to untap, draw. Shock in a Hollowed Fountain, then he's going to cast his commander, Tulane Teller Tales. He'll then tap his remaining forest in order to cast a Boreal Druid, triggering the Tulane, drawing him a card, and letting him drop a Breeding Pool, which he'll opt the Shock in. He'll then move to his end step, discarding his hand down to size and passing the turn. Kevin will untap, draw, then he'll cast a Dusk Legion Zealot. This will trigger both the Vanquisher's Banner and Edgar Markov. Dealing with the Vampire first, he'll create a creature token, which will trigger Impact Tremors dealing 1 damage to everyone, then he'll draw a card off the Vanquisher's banner. Then the Dusk Legion Zealot will enter the battlefield, triggering itself and Impact Tremors. He'll deal the 1 damage to everyone else first, and then he'll take the 1 off the Zealot, so that he can draw an additional card. He'll then drop a basic planes for turn, and pass. Adrian will untap, draw, bolt in his Academe the Under Crypt, then he's going to cast both Mothdust Changeling and Tetsuko Umuzawa Fugitive, opting to pay for the Ristic Study tax both times. He will then pass the turn. Round 6, Aiden's going to untap, draw his cards, drop a basic swamp, then he's going to cast Carrion Feeder, choosing the paid Ristic Study tax, then he'll cast Lord of the Undead, choosing the paid Ristic Study tax. On Aiden's end step, Guy is going to cast Worldly Tutor, searching his library for a Shrieking Drake and putting it on top. And the battle begins! Then, Guy's gonna untap, draw, cast Shrieking Drake, <laughs> trigger two lane, draw a card, cheat a mana confluence into play, and then bow Shrieking Drake to his hand. Then he'll cast Shrieking Drake, trigger two lane, draw, drop a Marsh Flats into play, then bounce Shrieking Drake back to his hand. Then he'll cast Shrieking Drake, trigger two lane, draw, drop an Arid Mesa, then bow Shrieking Drake back to his hand. He'll then crack both of his fetch lands in order to find a basic planes and a basic planes, and then on his turn he's going to overload Psychonic Rift, followed by casting a Deafening Silence. He'll then attack Adrian with his two lane for two commander damage before passing the turn. Calvin's going to untap, think about his life choices, draw a card, then he'll drop unclaimed territories naming Vampire. Hoping to find something, he'll cast Dust Legion Zealot first, triggering the token, triggering the draw. He finds nothing, he'll cast Impact Tremors, paying for the Ristic Study. Adrian will untap, draw, drop a Darkwater Catacombs, then he's going to cast both Moth Dust Changeling and Tetsuko Umazawa Fugitive, paying for the Ristic Study both times. Adrian will then pass the turn. Aiden's going to untap, 
draw. Then he's going to cast his commander, Jusa and Gerald, choosing to pay the Ristic Study tax. Jusa and Gerald will enter the battlefield, Aiden's going to mill four cards, and then Aiden's going to cast Carrion Feeder, not paying the Ristic Study tax, drawing Guy a card. Aiden's then going to pass the turn. After Guy untaps, he'll draw his card, and then he'll tap a forest in order to cast a Noble Hierarch, which will trigger Chulain, drawing him a card, and he'll be able to drop a Forbidden Orchard into play. And Guy's gonna tap a blue mana in order to cast Shrieking Drake, which will trigger Chulain, drawing him a card and letting him cheat an island into play before bouncing the Shrieking Drake back to his hand. Then he'll tap the island in order to cast Shrieking Drake, triggering the Chulain, drawing him a card and letting him drop a Rejuvenating Sprint into play, bouncing the Shrieking Drake back to his hand. Then Guy's gonna tap the Rejuvenating Sprint in order to cast Shrieking Drake, drawing him a card and not getting a land this time, but he bounces the Drake back to his hand. He did cast Finhorn Elves though, which does trigger Chulain, draw him a card and drop a forest. Then he'll attack Chulain into Adrian, who will not block, take the two commander damage, and then Guy will move to his second main phase, tapping two mana in order to cast Destiny Spinner, triggering Chulain, drawing him a card, passing the turn to Calvin, who will untap, draw, drop an Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth, and then he'll tap two, paying the Aristic Study, to cast Indulgent Aristocrat. This will trigger Edgar Markov, making a creature token, which triggers Impact Tremors, dealing damage to everyone, but then the Aristocrat enters play, which will deal damage to everyone again because of the Impact Tremors, and then he's going to cast Captivating Vampire, also paying the Aristic Study tax. This does the same thing. He'll make a creature token, which is entered in the battlefield, triggering Impact Tremors, dealing damage to everyone, and then the Captivating Vampire is going to enter the battlefield, which is going to deal another damage to everyone. It's very cool. And then he's going to pass the turn. Adrian's going to untap, draw, and then he's going to drop a command tower before moving into the red zone on Guy with both his creatures. Guy is going to respond by trying to cast Petty Theft, targeting the Umazawa. Adrian will respond by casting Familiar's Ruse, bouncing the changeling back to his hand in order to counter the spell. This resolves, the Petty Theft is countered, and then Adrian is going to Ninjutsu and Nyiriko. But in response to the ninjutsu, Guy's gonna flash in Containment Priest, which will trigger Chulain, drawing Guy a card, letting him cheat an Ancient Tomb into play. The Containment Priest enters the battlefield, which means the Yuriko, upon entering, gets exiled, being relocated to the command zone. On Adrian's second main phase, Adrian's gonna cast Moth Dust Changeling, paying the Rissic Study Tax, then passing the turn. Round 8, Aiden's going to untap, draw for turn, and then, seeing no other good options, Aiden's going to attack in on Adrian. Adrian will choose to block with his Moth Dust Changeling, so he takes no damage. Then, second main phase, Aiden's going to tap out in order to cast Mycaeus the Unhallowed, triggering Ristic Study. Aiden's going to drop a Teleria West tapped, but before he can pass the turn, Guy is going to tap his Forbidden Orchard in order to cast a Mystical Tutor, giving Aiden a spirit in the process. In response, Calvin's going to activate his Captivating Vampire's ability to try and take over Chulain, but in response to that, Guy is going to tap, lose some life, and he's going to cast White Mane Lion in order to bounce the Chulain back to his hand. This is going to trigger Chulain, letting him draw a card, and then everything's going to move to resolution. The White Mane Lion will bounce the Chulain back to his hand, the Captivating Vampire does nothing, and then the Mystical Tutor is going to finish resolving, finding Guy a Finalia Devastation from his library and putting it on top of his deck. Guy is going to untap, draw what he tutored for, and then he's going to prepare to devastate us with the Finale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. We're gonna tap mana confluence as a swap. Yeah, and then you're gonna lose two to ancient tomb. Yes, you're at two. Cast finale. Yeah. Why not? Okay. Grand Arbiter Augustine. Wow. Makes sense. With Grand Arbiter Augustine preventing any fuckery from anyone, even if they had something, guy is going to swing in for a metric fuck ton, doing lethal to everyone and ending the game. Guy wins. So let's talk about it. The first deck that I want to get out of the way now is the Edgar Markov deck, which really did a whole fuck ton of nothing. If I remember correctly, there was an Impact Tremors play, and then there was a Vanquisher's Banish play, and then there was a Dusk Legion Zealot play, and later on a Captivating Vampire play. But I don't remember any like reasonable attacks and it didn't really drain the board that much. 
There is that one turn after the Cyclonic Rift where the Edgar Markov player did it in reverse order. He went Dust Fusion Zealot into Impact Tremors instead of Impact Tremors into Dust Fusion Zealot. And you might be thinking, man, if he wasn't trying to dig for a new card to try and get out of this awful situation, he could have actually killed the true lane player because he ended up at two life. To which the response is, the true lane player, player could attack his mana better. Like there was really no out. Sometimes the cookie just crumbles. I guess it was a misplay at the end of the day. And it really just hammers home just how out of the game Edgar Markov was. But sometimes, man, you can't, there's, there's nothing you can really do to stop the choo-choo. After that, there is a Jason and Gerald deck. And the Jason and Gerald deck had a pretty interesting showing as far as this particular game is concerned. Most importantly, that mystical tutor into the damnation, which reset the board and almost gave everyone else a chance, especially since Edgar Markov hadn't really started pushing out resources yet. But Choo Choo Train just keeps going. And it didn't help that the Jason and Gerald deck wasn't really tuned at the time. Um, we're working on fixing that right now. There's a lot of decks that we're gonna be powering up soon, but you know, this is the past and I'm talking about the future. I'm stuck in the single pocket of time with the egg. After that is the Yuriko deck. And the Yuriko deck did what the Yuriko deck does. You know what the Yuriko deck does. It draws into the goddamn Ornithopter before its first play, plays it with a fetch land, and then just shears Yuriko. But with that said, you know, I'm always interested in seeing what Yuriko does. There's this high variance to how it plays because you never know what's gonna be revealed off the top. And there's only so many creatures in play at a time. Personally, when I play against Adrian, I'd rather play against Yuriko than Kumena because Kumena is just a bunch of green. I like Yuriko. But Yuriko also could not stop the Choo Choo Train. What was the Choo Choo Train? I'll tell you what the Choo Choo Train was. First, it was goddamn okay and adversary. And then after that, we get Choo Lane to play, and we're gonna worldly tutor for a goddamn shrieking Drake. Boom. There's the train, there's the fuel, it's just choo choo. I remember when I first moved back to the States, we had a game against Choo Lane. It's on the channel, I think. It was a goalless win, and I think it ended up being the Manic Crypt, like, deciding factor. But Choo Lane was in that pod. And one of the first things that happened in that pod was, all right, gang, it's time to beat the living shit out of the true lane deck now or else. And at the time, I didn't really appreciate why. Now I do. If you don't stop the choo-choo train, turns out drawing cards and getting land drops into play for free out of the command zone is a bit fucked. And... Unlike the Yuriko deck, which while it's getting, you know, card draw is just added into the hand and it's a bit random in that sense, the True Lane deck, in having the extra color and the effect a bit more generic, just ran into play. The, the variance is very low, I think. And I believe Adrian feels that as well, and I believe the pod feels that as well. This was a very low energy game. You might have noticed that there wasn't a lot of, like, in-game dialogue that I put into the video, because sometimes, well, it is not funny. funny. But after the game, Adrian was like, you know, that was great. Time time to retire the true lane. And the guy was sad at the thought because he does love his true lane deck, but I don't remember him objecting that much. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed seeing the true lane deck. Deck link, deck, 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 deck list in the description below. But if you want to see more of the choo-choo train, it's not gonna happen in the near future. It's time to say goodbye to Chuling Tell Her Tales. You told your last tale, buddy. Calvin, stop doing a fucking Tumblr edit. I like Tumblr. I can scream if it's what you want, but I don't want to. I want you to...